Thank you, Ayo. It's always encouraging when they say such good things about you. But for those of you who didn't get my name, my name is Manish. It's very simple, Mani-ish. You say it, you combine them, Mani, Manish. I guess my parents knew my love for money, and that's why they named me Manish. So um, anyway, I just wanted to emphasize that, you know, even though you look at me and you feel there's an Oibo standing in front of you, I'm actually not an Oibo. I was born in Africa, and I'm second generation African. So I'm as African as some of you sitting in the audience. But had the privileges of studying in some of the best universities in England and America. But I really came back to Africa to pursue my lifelong ambition, which was entrepreneurship. And I've been an entrepreneur for more than 25 years. The purpose of today's talk is to basically share with you my entrepreneurial journey. But before I want to do that, I want to stretch the stage by just talking, just introducing you to the business a bit so that you can understand the context of my entrepreneurial journey. Our business globally is called Afri Global Group. In Nigeria, we've existed for more than 25 years under the name of Nagode. And it's a conglomerate, as has been said before. We look at, we, we operate in various sectors, petrochemicals, chemicals, soft commodities. We are into logistics, healthcare in a big way. In terms of turnover in Nigeria, our turnover is upwards of 30 billion naira. And, you know, we are truly a global company. We have operations in Dubai, China, Korea, India, Cameroon, and Ethiopia. And as we speak, we keep on opening up more and more geographies in, in Africa. But some of you might be wondering, I mean, am I trying to brag about myself, about my company? Why am I telling you all this? The reason I'm telling you all this is to basically share with you about my journey and to tell you some of about how, about the success. And actually, the main purpose of what, what I want to share today is talk about the failures. So I wanted to basically say to you that a lot of successful people do not talk about their failures. They basically only talk about their, their successes. And I felt that it's a very good opportunity for me today in TEDx to talk about the failures and you know what I learned from them, and that's something which I will focus on. So it might not surprise you that my entrepreneurial journey has had various ups and downs, and that's very natural. I mean, you cannot be an entrepreneur for 25 years without having failures. But some of you might not know, and some of you do not, might not realize that some of the failures were really bad. And the, when I meant bad, it means I've been bankrupt more than two times. In my 25 years journey, I've actually had situations where I've been bankrupt. And it was so serious that at some point, my wife, who used to live with me in Lagos, and now, now we, we are based out of Dubai, but used to live with me in Lagos, used to actually sleep at night in the car because that was the only time she could have access to the AC and I didn't have enough money to even fix the generator. So it was, you know, those were days which were very, tri uh, which were very challenging for me. And when one talks about bankruptcy, I always like to share one of my funniest stories about bankruptcy, yeah? Some of you must be familiar with Donald Trump in New York, right? Yeah. So, I mean, when Donald Trump was once walk, taking a walk in Central Park with his friend, and he sees somebody who's called a panhandler. In America, they call beggars panhandler. So, yeah? so he sees a panhandler, and he tells his friend, uh, Chuck, you know, this guy is actually richer than me. So the guy says to him, Donald, what do you mean this guy is richer than me, or is richer than you? So what Donald tells him, he says, friend, this guy is at best zero. I am minus $2 billion. So this guy is definitely richer than me. So that was exactly my situation. I was owing people millions and, in fact, billions of Nairas when I was bankrupt, yeah? I think even another lady, this uh, the speaker before me, some, uh, Cynthia, she also talked about the fact when she was owing a lot of money. So bankruptcy is not fun, guys. Apart from, apart from the fact that I was owing people a lot of money in, in, you know, a lot of creditors and a lot of people I was owing a lot of money, 
one of the challenges which I faced and which is very peculiar to being an entrepreneur in Nigeria, and I guess the environment here, or probably Africa, is that in this environment, when you owe people money, it's, it's not a civil thing, it's a criminal offense. And everybody tries to shake you down. So I've been shaken down by the police, I've been shaken down by customs, I've been shaken down by immigration, I've been shaken down by SSS, NAVDAC, every possible uh, agency possible. And when it means by shakedown, it is not that they just, they just came to my office and harassed me for money. I've actually been in a cell. I've actually been in a cell in a papa, you know. And I remember, you know, very clearly in my, in my own experience, you know, going to the cell and, you know, you know, how they do it. They take out, you know, you have to wear the clothes and all that. And you go there and I was introduced to the president of the cell who was called His Excellency. I had to go and meet His Excellency, who was the chairperson of the cell, and introduce myself to him. And then he said to me, and I still remember it very clearly today, he said to me, welcome to Burkina suffering. So, <laughs> but it was a, I think in life you realize when you, when you are determined and when you put your mind to it, at the end of the day, no situation is permanent and, you re and I realized that I, I, you know, it, I, I, I got the mental toughness which I still get, to, get today. Of course, another thing which I'd like to share with you in terms of failures is for those of you in the audience who aspire to be entrepreneurs, who aspire to be successful, one tip I'd like to give you is the biggest source of challenges in our business is not the competition, it's not out there. It's basically our staff sometimes who, cause, who bring the biggest challenges. And in my own experience of 25 years of being an entrepreneur, I have lost hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, Naira, to frauds by staff. So guys, that always happens. Of course, in my own experience of 25 years, I've had situations where my factories, my warehouses have burned down, there were floods, and all kinds of issues like that. So in the end, if somebody wants to be an entrepreneur, if you ask me, my mantra to him would be to tell him, you know, those of you, you know, those of you who've heard of Murphy's Law, right? Murphy's Law says, what does it say? It says, everything which could go wrong will go wrong, yeah? If you ask me in my experience, everything which can go wrong will not go wrong once, it will go wrong, uh, go wrong at least 10 times. So be prepared for it, guys, if you want to be an entrepreneur, yeah? So I wanted to just share with you next, please, is on my learnings and what I learned out of all the failures I had. And I've titled that, How Do You Get Out of a Big Hole? In my experience, the way one gets out of a big hole in business when one is facing all these situations is very, very simple. Stop digging. I'll say it again. The way you get out of a big hole is stop, stop digging. And what do I mean by stop digging? What I meant by stop digging is the first thing one has to do when one is in a situation like this, in a, in a business failure situation, in my experience, what I did is I confronted the brutal facts. And on the business situation, of course, it was easy. I looked at the businesses. I looked at the businesses which are making money, losing money. Looked at the businesses I wanted to keep, businesses I wanted to sell, businesses I wanted to uh, close down. And that was quite simple. But one of the things which is extremely important in a situation of business failure is to look at the issue of stakeholder management. And my most important stakeholders were my staff and the people I were owing a lot of money, banks and creditors. With the staff, what I did and I feel it worked for me is, I remember I called all my staff in a town hall meeting, told them openly and clearly, the company is in trouble, don't worry, we'll get out of it one day, we'll get out of it, and presented them the plan of action. But at the same time, I told the staff that whoever wants to leave, let them leave quickly rather than later. And of course, some of the mouse really left and you know, um, that, you know that's what happens when you, uh, people uh, uh, perceive a sinking, sinking ship. But with my creditors, the strategy which I used and I would recommend to anybody in a situation like that is make sure one over, -com over communicates. So I made it a point to communicate with them, to talk to them, made sure before they call me to call them. Many people used to think this Oibo is going to run away from Nigeria. So I told the bank 
managers and all that is that come and have breakfast with me every morning so that you can go and tell your MD of the bank that this guy is still not, is still not run away. So, you know, in, in situations like this, it's all, what worked for me is over communication. But I think I wouldn't like to, I wouldn't like to end by, on the issue of business failures without telling you what is the most important issue of, about business failures. I think the most important issue in business failures is managing your own state, managing your emotions, managing your thoughts, managing your own uh, well-being. The first thing I did is, and it's something which is a habit I still have today, is every morning for half an hour or one hour, I used to read inspirational books or something which was, listen to some talks. In those days, we didn't have TED, but today, you know, I find TED in a very inspirational platform to hear people's stories. And, you know, that somehow has a way of setting you up for the whole day. And the second thing I did is, in the evening, I used to start, I used to write a gratitude journal. Very simple. Five things which are good about my life. And somehow, the gratitude journal and the inspirational stuff in the morning put me in a condition that I was able to deal with all these issues and challenges in my life. I would just like to say something about what my experience taught me. And one of the most ins uh, inspiring thing for me is even yesterday when I was coming to Ife, I'd heard about Ife a lot, great Ife. Can I please ask great Ife to give a round of applause to yourselves, please? Because I always, always heard about this university and I never had the privilege of visiting it. But it's truly special. You come here and you can feel the energy, you can feel the people, you can feel the... Basically, it's a culture of excellence. So you can give yourself a round of applause one more time, guys. Yeah. So can I say something about my contribution in terms of solving X or my thoughts about solving X is that what Nigeria needs, what Africa needs is role model inspirational companies. We need a lot more Googles and Apples in Africa. And it's your job, your guys' duty. I think you guys are up to it. Please go and go for it and create those companies. And I would say, in conclusion, that in my own little way, my company, my group, and my endeavors are also trying to build and contribute to inspirational companies in Africa. So thank you. I... You've been a really good audience. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts. And in the end, I'd just like to dedicate my, my speech today to my folks and my grandmother who taught me that values are more important than things. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>